For this elimination challenge, you'll be cooking for an elite group of Olympic athletes. And in honor of the Tokyo Games, what would be better than making food inspired by Japan? Don't worry, guys, we're bringing in some help. It's my extreme pleasure to introduce your guest judges, Nikki Nakayama and Carol Ida Nakayama. They are the chefs and co-owners of two Michelin-starred restaurant and Naka right here in Los Angeles. Chefs, to celebrate the Tokyo Games and Japanese tradition, each of you will be responsible for one dish in a six-course progressive kaiseki meal. It is the most formal way of dining in Japanese cuisine. It's a celebration of nature. So it's about doing your best to protect the integrity of an ingredient and cooking with restraint. You look very uncomfortable and nervous <laughs> right now. Even though you are competing as individuals, we really want this to be a progressive meal. OK, Melissa, because you won the quick fire, you'll get first pick of the course you want to do. I'll do the mushimono. You'll also get to assign the rest of the courses to your fellow competitors. Oh, wow. <laughs> What course would you like Gregory to do? I have a feeling he's interested in the shokuji. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. The dessert for you. Again. <laughs> you want appetizer. You down for grill? Yeah, down for grill. OK. Malarkey Owen soup Sounds course. wonderful. Tomorrow, you'll have two hours to prep and cook before service begins at the iconic Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. The winner of this challenge will receive a trip for two to see the Olympics in Tokyo. <laughs> what? Keep in mind the right places to hold back and the right places to be bold. Good luck. Whew. Thank you, Melissa. I'm doing a uh, scallop dish with yes. um, a tomato dashi, coffee, avocado, and serving it with citric caviar and bonito aioli. I love it. What do you think about going to the Olympics? Sounds pretty fun. I went in 96. You did go? A long time ago, yeah. You've already been in, my friend, and it should be me that goes. I want to go back. Hey! I am doing the soup course, so I'm going to do a light little poach on these pot prawns right here, a little salted water, exactly how the chefs told me to do it. Trying to find that balance between what Chef Nikki is looking for and what I'm trying to produce is kind of fun and tricky at the same time. It's so few ingredients, but everything has to be handled exactly perfect. So that's my goal here. What's up? How's it going? Hi, good. Yeah. I'm just getting my clam dashi stock going. That's going to be used as the base of the chawan mushi. Have you ever been to Japan? No. No. Yeah. It's amazing. You have to go. Will you try it? Can you crisp up the skin a little more? Is that possible? I start rendering out the fat on the flat top. I think this is going to work, but it takes quite some time. Brian? Good. Make sure it's exactly what I want. Please try to hold them as straight as you can, OK? OK. Thank you. Mm. Wow. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hi, Hi, Brian. And I did a, uh, a scallop that's served with a confit of avocado, a tomato dashi, a cetra caviar, and bonito aioli. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It smells amazing. What he selected here really brought out the beautiful colors of the scallop and balanced it out with some of those little hints of green. I liked it. It was very fresh and refreshing. The touch of the avocado is really nice because the added fat adds Rich. richness to it. My tweezers are other people's tongues. Oh, wow. Oh, Hello, welcome. Oh, wow. 
Thank you. I did a traditional dashi broth, spot prawn, celery, and squash. I did the celery act very kind of al dente because it has such a great fun texture and you really taste the celery root in there. Will you please kind of stir it together? It will actually just kind of cook right there in this wonderful dashi broth. Thanks, Chef. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I thought Malarkey's spot prawns were so good. I actually saved one to the end. I, I thought it was great. Presentation-wise, I thought it looked much more compelling than it actually tasted. The sizing and cutting techniques were a little bit off for me. Mm -hmm. I've never had a soup where the broth is poured into like the ingredients itself. Thank you so much. Thank you. The third course was the grilled course is a jasmine tea smoked duck grilled over charcoal with roasted and fresh grapes, miso, and saba. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Christian, first time eating duck. You can like really taste the grill mm -hmm. um, and the seasoning that you put in it. It's just all right. I think the crispiness on the outside of, of the dish would have gave it a different mm -hmm. texture. Just the one little extra that I would have liked. Kaseki food is so precise. And when I'm looking at this duck here, how this side is that thin and that side is that thick. It's just a mistake. There was a little bit too much richness and sweetness and not enough acid. Oh. All right, everything made it. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I made the fourth course. It's a Dungeness crab chawan mushi with clams, chanterelles, and Meyer lemon. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. It's delicious. I love it. The crab blends to me really well. I, I thought it was really good, actually. And I'm not sure if this is meant to be a soup, but I really enjoyed it. It's eating like a soup because it didn't set as solidly. I think that I'm used to seeing chow and mushy. I agree. Wow. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. For the rice course, I made some short grain rice and sable fish, a broth with mushrooms, lightly salted daikon, the cucumbers were just marinated miso, and the apples were mixed with a little bit of mirin and rice wine vinegar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought the skin on the fish was actually very well cooked, and I was impressed by that. I love the pickled bits on the side, I think, but it was a nice balance to how, I think, soft everything was with the dish. I mean, I feel like it was it was kind of bland, like it didn't have as much flavor as some of the other dishes. It was just missing a little flavor, but I loved the combination of everything. It's a very subtle dish. I actually think it's under seasoning. From a technical standpoint, the clarity of that broth as it was being poured was very cloudy. Yep. All right, guys. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, how is everybody? Hello. Hi, Such a pleasure to cook for everybody. God, I'm so excited. I was the sixth course, the dessert course, and I really wanted to embody nature, so I picked citrus. In it is a panna cotta on the bottom that has a little grapefruit, butt orange, and orange in it. On top of that is a fresh yuzu curd, and then on top of that is an orange granita. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice job. Can I just blurt something out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in love. Oh, I love it. I wish there was two lemons in there. <laughs> I thought that this was just a little vessel of flavor. I agree, and I love that she used the, the lemon shell, because in Japanese food, we do that a lot. I think the interaction between the panna cotta, the yuzu, the granita, there's a subtlety to the combination, but it's still a really assertive dish at the same time. I think it's really successful. It's a beautiful meal. Tough decisions, yeah. huh? Tough it decisions. is a hard decision. Yeah, it is. Tonight, we had a unanimous decision about who the winner of this challenge is. Nikki? I felt that all of you did a wonderful job. It was really, really impressive. And the one dish that really stood out for us was an incredible balance of flavors as well as ingredients. And that chef is... I'm not going to. <laughs> what?